are going to get going on some football, but we have to start somewhere. So Doug is going to help me out with just, just the basics, Doug. How the field's laid out, you know, who's doing what. So I can think I can do that. First of all, we'll, we'll start with the field. Um, the field from goal line to goal line is 100 yards. The end zones are 10 yards deep. So you get a total of 120 yards long. The width is 53 and a third yards. So that's the layout of the football field. 53 and a third yards. I didn't just do 53. Couldn't do 53. Whatever. It's 160 feet wide. After that, you're going to have 11 members on the offense and 11 members on the defense. Uh, you'll start with the offensive line here. The guy in the center that is actually the guy that's the center starts out every play. He touches the ball every time. He's the one that ex technical term quarterback center exchange, otherwise known as the snap of the ball. Then you have two guards, right and left guard, two tackles, right and left tackle. On the end, most teams have a tight end. And then you'll have two receivers, two running backs, and a quarterback. Now with sophisticated offenses these days, the tight ends, the running backs, and the receivers are all interchangeable. You can sometimes have three wide receivers and two running backs, or three tight ends and two running backs. So you have different combinations of those guys in the backfield. Okay. On defense, you have your defensive line. Those are the guys usually with their hands on the ground. The linebackers, which we call the second level defenders, and then the defensive backs, which are the third level defenders, which incorporate the corners, which usually cover the wide receivers, and then the safeties. And they usually patrol deep or actually help them uh, support the run. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I got that. All right. Now, I know with our little guys, our quarterback is already up here, but typically, okay, your quarterback, unless he's in a shotgun, right? And a Correct. shotgun means that he's, how far back does a quarterback have to stand for a shotgun, or is that a preference thing? As long, anytime, we call it a shotgun, anytime his hands are not underneath the center's rear end. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I, could, I would think the guys being guys, they would want their hands not down there kind of frequently, I would think. I, you know what? It's one of those things. It's, it builds the camaraderie on the team. <laughs> yeah, I bet it does. Yeah. But uh, as, as football has evolved and, uh, and developed, uh, a lot more teams and schemes, offensive schemes, have moved the quarterback in the shotgun formation because it helps them read the defense quicker and uh, get some depth quicker so they can be back there and have more time to diagnose where they need to go with the ball. All right, when they say that the quarterback is in the pocket. It, it is actually just a formation in a passing situation that the line forms that they call a pocket. And what I'll set it up right here. A true pocket is where the tackles are deeper, the guards are in, in front of them in the center. So it's just like oh. a pocket, and then that protects the, the quarterback, and that's where you... Uh, that's the definition of a pocket. You can also have a roving pocket. Let's say the quarterback rolls out, which means he moves to his right or left, and then you're going to fan the pocket a little bit, and everybody's going to move to his side. And that's ah. the textbook form of what, on a passing down, how you would want to see the offensive line protect the quarterback. Tackle box is the area between the right tackle and the left tackle, and that is determined for a lot of things. It uh, will determine intentional grounding. If the quarterback's inside this tackle box and there's no receiver in that area, subjectively, according to the uh, official, and he throws the ball on the ground, that's intentional grounding. Okay. And if he's outside of the tackle box, outside, ah. and the tackle box is defined as when the ball is snapped. So you can take imaginary lines and draw right here when the ball is snapped. After the ball is snapped, if he's outside of this line, he can throw the ball anywhere, and it's not considered intentional grounding, and it's not a penalty. All right, here's what you have. You'll have a center right here, and imagine a ball in his hand. Okay. And if you take two lines and run up the tip of the ball towards the defensive side and the tip of the ball on the offensive side, imaginary line to the right and to the left, all the way to the sideline, that's the neutral zone. Okay. And that's why we'll use, you won't, you'll see a little space, and every shot of the line you see, you always have to see that ball out front and no one in there, and that's the neutral zone. Oh, okay. All right. Now, uh, the ball goes down the field, and typically everything is measured in tenths. Okay, downs. 
downs. You have four downs to make 10 yards. Four, so you get four chances to go 10, 10 yards. yards. Okay. And after, you've got, after you've made 10 yards or more, they'll mark it wherever that ball is, and then they'll stretch what we have changed to measure the 10 yard difference. Okay. So you, and then you get four more chances. Okay. So at first and 10, that means this is your first try to go after that 10 yard increment, right? Correct. Okay. And so now let's say you get to um, you've third down, you've done your play, you have a major 10, then that's when most people punt. Correct. And a lot of 99% of the time you're going to see a team punt. There are a few obsessions, exceptions for the rule. Uh, if it's late in the game and you're behind, and you want to try to score, or a lot of teams and a lot of coaches, if they're aggressive coaches, if they're what we call the plus side, on the defensive side of the 50, they may uh, take a chance and go for it then. Because I got to tell you, I'm sitting in a game, and it's like fourth and an inch. They better be going for it, because it's like you're making all, you ought to be able to get a dang on inch now. A lot of people believe that, but there's also field position when we say, if it's fourth uh -huh. and an inch on your own 11 yard line, you're backed up, it's not worth it because if you don't make it by any circumstance, a fumbled snap, someone trips and falls, they only have 10 yards before a touchdown. So a field position is a big determination, determining factor on if to go for it on fourth down or not. Okay. Now, and if you, okay, so let's say I went for it on fourth down, I didn't make it. At that point, the other the, team takes the possession ball The ball's turned ball over right on there. downs. That's a technical Turn term. Turnover on downs. Turned over on downs, and the other team, it's first and 10 and their offense comes on the field and takes the ball. Okay. Um, now, one thing I did forget to ask when we were talking about the snap and everything, the line of scrimmage, what determines the, the line, line of scrimmage? The line of scrimmage is uh, the center has the ball and the furthest point away from him, draw an imaginary line to the sidelines to the right or left and that is considered the line of scrimmage. So if I get that correct, then the edge of the outside edge of the line of scrimmage is going to be your inside edge of the neutral zone. Right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs>